Good day and welcome back to another DBZ Dirk Metal video. In this video we're going to be taking a look at my 10 top tips for starting Dirk Metal and basically a breakdown of exactly what you need to know, little bits of tips and tricks on how to start Dokan, get into Dokan, you know, be into Dokan as a player. Now, of course, uh, we're going to start with the very first tip, which I count as tip zero, but, uh, you know, technically speaking would be one, so I guess it's 11 tips. But uh, this is the greatest warrior, Goku. Now, you should, in theory, uh, be following the greatest warrior mission panel. Uh, I have a video on it. I'll leave it in the top right-hand corner in the link. But the greatest warrior uh, mission panel essentially provides you the closest thing Dokken has to being a tutorial in the game. At the end of it, you'll get Goku at a full rainbow level. He's a fantastic unit for a lot of reasons. Firstly, he's just really good statistically for the beginning of the game. He provides an all types lead, which is really awesome. And also, they give him to you fully prepared. Now, of course, there can be times where you make mistakes and don't manage to follow the missions properly. It's a question I get a lot. So if you need to recover or get extra copies of Goku or do anything, go to the Saiyan Attacks DB Story event and you'll be able to get yourself the resources you need, including extra copies of Goku and his Awakening Medals, should you make a mistake somewhere along the lines. Now the next tip that we have is going to be specifically about Quest Mode. Quest Mode is one of the predominant game modes. It's recently got quite a nice UI revamp, but Quest Mode is honestly speaking, one of the best ways early on to just get early account progression. We're talking simply being you'll find your Dragon Balls here. So you'll find the Dragon Balls to make wishes for items and things like that early on, which is very, very important. So finding the Dragon Balls is very crucial here. Next is getting Dragon Stones, which are your main currency in Dokkan Battle, which you'll use to summon with. And just in general, uh, it's one of those fantastic uh, easy ways to start getting into the game obviously it's a little bit boring it's not the hardest game mode but it's a great way to get resources like in most mobile gacha games next we're going to talk about the rarity of units when you start dokan you kind of get bombarded with a whole bunch of units and dokan's changed a lot over the years nowadays generally speaking whenever you're summoning or farming or trying to just get a unit from an event or something you mainly in most senses, there are the odd occasion, but you generally speaking are looking for units that start as an SSR minimum. So when you're summoning, if the unit has SSR next to them, when you're doing an event and the event drops a character and that character has SSR next to them, generally speaking, those characters are far more worth your time than other units. And we'll talk specifically a little bit more about things like passives and that, but this is an important concept to understand. The next super important thing to understand and the most pivotal important thing when you're building your teams and starting Dokkan is your leader skill. Okay? Your leader is the unit that they have a leader on them when you're building your team but then the top left hand corner. You need to make sure that every single unit you have fits under your current leader skill. If you are building a team for example and it says strength type units and you have an AGL type unit there, that unit's not going to be receiving the buff from that unit and leader skill is your most predominant determining power in your team strength okay so it's the very first part of Dokan's calculation when it comes to strength it's a very very important part now you don't have to get too specific with the leader skill generally speaking what you do is when you summon or when you earn units in the beginning of the game I want you to take the unit that has the highest active skill that you can make a full team of. So if you have a skill that's transformation boost, for example, and you have six transformation boost units, generally go with that. Like I said, Goku's all types lead is fantastic for this purpose. Next, uh, we need to talk about super attacks. I've screwed up the order on the left hand side here. So just switch passes with super attacks, uh, but super attacks, quite frankly um, super attack level to be specific is a very huge determining factor in your units damage so even if you don't have hidden potential orbs in the unit even if you don't 
do much to a unit, even if you don't dirk and awaken a unit in the beginning of the game. Super attack level and the multiplier it provides is very crucial to that unit's performance. The easiest way to increase a unit's super attack level is by using Kai's. You will get some in the beginning of the game that you can use, but you want to use those sparingly. Where possible, you want to actually use copies of the same unit or alternatively, units with the same name. Now try not to use your summonable units for this and don't use your first three copies of the unit because you need those for hidden potential system, but look rather at where you can pick up units that have the same name and use copies of those units. I have a guide on this uh, and I'll leave a link to it again in the top right hand corner. But a great example is this Goku. I've started, I've got a Goku from the World Tournament and now I want to raise his super attack level. So I go to story events. I see that there is a Goku, an SSR Goku available from this event. I farm this Goku and I use him to increase that Goku's super attack level. It's a little bit complex and I will leave a video to it in the top right hand corner, but raising super attack levels in the beginning of the game is crucially important to overall performance. Following this, the next super important area is passive. Now passive is about as equally as important as super attack level. Passives of units are basically the second step in determining their overall ability. So when you apply a leader skill to a unit, the next part that's applied to that unit is their passive. Now I'm not gonna break down exactly how passives work. As you can see, they can get very, very complicated. But when you're starting the game, there's only two real things you need to see in a passive to know that you probably want to use this unit. Keep it nice and simple. You wanna look for an attack up and you want to look for defense up. And generally you want to look for difference percentages. You don't want to have flat attack buffs. So a great example is Pan, she heals. It's not super duper helpful. Next, you take a look at the strength Goku. He's got you know, plus 7,000 attack, which isn't bad. I mean, you could technically use him, especially in the beginning of the game. But remember that your passives only change when you do it in awaken units. So whatever a unit's passive is, when you get them in their SSR state, that's the passive, especially in the beginning of the game, that you're going to probably have to use them with. So one of the ones you want to take a look for is just your generic attack up defense up passives. If you take a look at, for example, Broly here in his SSR state, this is kind of the passive you're looking for. You don't necessarily need the key. However, what you do want is you want the attack up and the defense up. That's really about it. If you can get those on six units, not even in the same stat percentages, but just something similar to that, no matter how simple it is, you'll probably be able to start the game and make progress. Now let's talk about the hidden potential system. This is a system that is the duplication system for Dokkan Battle. Now most mobile gachas have some kind of duplication system for obtaining extra copies of the unit. In terms of a hidden potential system, this is not super complex, although it does look complex, but you need four copies of the unit to fully unlock the system. So when you do summon, if you get a second copy of unit, don't slap it into the super attack. Rather, keep it and use it for the hidden potential system. The order in which you unlock the hidden potential system is important though. You don't just want to unlock any root or node. You want to start with the bottom right hand corner. You then want to start go to the top left hand corner. You then want to push to the top right hand corner and then to the bottom left. Now, that's the order that I feel is best. The only super important rule about this is that you do the bottom right hand corner first. Okay, so you need to do the bottom right hand corner first. That's the most important section uh, and unlocking it first is a huge power spike for your units. If you do can awaken a unit and you then want to reverse it to open its in potential system, you will need one of these hourglasses. You can obtain them from the Bubba shop, which we'll talk about next but it's the only way to reverse units. You can automatically apply it though from the previous screen. Now we'll talk about the bubble shop. So the bubble shop isn't something uh, super duper uh, like crazy at first. It can be very overwhelming to a new player, but there are a couple of things to note. Firstly, right, when you are going to the bubble shop, you get lots of currencies, but the two main currencies, especially in the beginning, is bubble points, which you obtain by exchanging characters. 
Now a golden rule of thumb as a beginning player is to only exchange SR and lower units. You don't want to exchange any SSR units unless they are free to play units that you farmed or have extra copies of or something. The reason being is in the beginning of the game, like I said, you need to build up your pool and roster of units. So any SSR could potentially easy A, probably does have an easy A, probably has an awakening. So exchanging them is not necessary. Next, frequent the bubble shop. For bubble points, you really want to look at picking up basically anything special that you can find there, be it support items or things of such nature. And under the Zenny store, you can actually pick up a lot of awakening medals now. Of course, you can only buy one per day, but especially in the beginning of the game, things like Supreme Kai's, Elder Kai's are very difficult to come by. And so picking them up and basically making sure that you have these resources is very good. Not to mention you can grab some really good support items here, although they are pricey, especially for new players. So I would refrain from doing so. Uh, if you are interested, things like Nurse Chi Chi, Whis, Icarus, are kind of the only real ones you need to focus on. There are a ton of other great items, so coming here is very, very good. On top of that as well, if you're doing story events and things like that, and you pick up event currency, or there's something you've picked up, but you don't know where to use it, chances are it's at the Bubba Shop. The Bubba Shop is where you expend all of these different currencies. There's hundreds of them. So if you ever get confused about something or want to know where to use something, it's probably more than likely 100% of the time the Bubba Shop. Now, next, we want to talk about where do we start. So I have a full-on progression guide that kind of gives you a big scope breakdown of where you want to go in Dokkan and where, and I do it at the beginning of every year. So I'll leave a link to that in the top right-hand corner. But generally speaking, as a new player outside of quest mode, the thing you really want to start with is things like story events. So in terms of story events, especially talking uh, about events whereby the character is someone you need for your team. So story events drop lots of dragon stones. They don't really drop a lot of other stuff. Uh, they'll drop like minimal training rewards. Some of them drop Kai's and things like that uh, or give them from the missions. But generally speaking, you want to pick up characters that fit your team. So if I pick up a Realm of the Gods lead and I now need to fill up my team, West Kai and Supreme Kai are going to help me out. On top of that as well, as I mentioned before, farming currencies and things like that to get Elder Kai's and that is also a viable option. A great example is this Margin Boo event where from stage 5 I can get chocolates and I can exchange these for Elder Kai's. Now in terms of in general farming stuff, story events do come back quite regularly. However, just be prepared that they may not come back super soon. So don't get confused if they go away, they are on a schedule. On top of that as well, uh, as I suggest to all new players, you should be farming the Ginyu Force and the Team Bardock. These guys complete a ton of content. They're basically an auto-created team that new players can use to tackle a ton of early to mid-game content on both sides with both teams. They complete things like SBRs, Dokkan events, and they can really help to either fill up teams that you want to build uh, or alternatively just be a team themselves that you can use. So it's all pretty good stuff. Now, after that, we need to really look at where to get resources. So we started the game, but now we're struggling. We need Kai's, we need hidden potential orbs. So the best place to start is Extreme Z Battle and especially the All-Star Battle. The All-Star Battle is 999 floors. It's a very easy, easy, easy uh, extreme Z battle, especially in the beginning, and it gives you hidden potential orbs and kais. Okay, not lots, but it gives you some, and you're going to need those for your characters. On top of that, there's two raids that are always up, being the Perfect Cell raid, which is also very similar in that it's an incredibly easy extreme Z battle. We're talking, you know, if you bring a Doken event level team, you'll be able to clear it, and the same with Omega Shenron. So the moment you can clear a Doken event, you're pretty much good to go. Come here, farm these events, and claim yourself a ton of training items, hidden potential orbs, and even Kai's. Okay, also do other Extreme Z battles as far as you can to get orbs and Kai's. The next one is the punching bag event. So again, I've done lots of guides on these, and how to build nuking teams and everything. But clearing these punching bag events is very straightforward. And even if you don't clear them in the full, even getting remotely up the ladder, like the first two rungs, first two achievements, 
gives you a ton of items especially in terms of zenny again hidden potential orbs lots of stuff you need yes stones are nice but as a new player you're going to have tons of stones it's things like hidden potential orbs kinds and zenny where you're going to struggle as a new player and these are the quickest ways to get them next if we're taking a look we're looking realistically at summons and this is the final step so as a new player summon don't be too scared you have tons of stones in quest mode you have tons of stones in events that you can farm don't panic too much try to summon at least a little bit like i said you need to get a good leader skill that's what's going to really elevate you in the game summoning on the latest banners especially if they have Doken festival in the title card is a great way to start not only do these bring usually the latest dfe unit which is always usually a good unit but they have a ton of older ones that allow you to build teams okay they also drop red coins which are the most long-standing usable coin that you can use so there's no harm in summoning them a couple times there are always going to be tons of other banners up and it's difficult to say in just one minute exactly what to avoid and what not to look at but if you see things like discounts it's generally good to go avoid the starts of summon that they give you it's not really worth your time and avoid things like extreme z legendary summons or yellow coin banners the reason i say this is because these banners don't guarantee you a lot of good units and also what they do is a lot of their other units are general banner units so they're less valuable for new players than dfe banners or red coin banners and that's it from me i hope you guys enjoyed the video let me know if you found all of this helpful and i'll see you in the next one till then take care stay safe and as always bye